Hello there, this is Mr. Dunaway. Welcome to our first flipped lesson. This is what the flipped classroom is like. We're going to practice it together today. Uh, before we begin, in front of you, you should have some notes uh, that you will be filling in some blanks. We're looking at probably two videos for this section. I will do one video where I cover the uh, material, which is the stuff on this page. And probably because of time, I'll have to make another video to go with it where we actually practice working out some example problems. All of these notes should be with you in class the next day uh, if you were to watch this at home, but this one we're going to do together. Main thing is write down everything I write down, okay? If I write it down, you write it down. That's basically your path to do your homework when you come to class. Well, let's get right into just the important topics here. We'll do this page. I'll stop the video, and then I'll begin video number two for you. A few important vocabulary words in this chapter uh, begins with the first one. I'm going to number these here. I, I should have done this on the paper. That's going to be number one right there. That's number two. That's number three. And then all these points right here go actually with number three, and that'll make sense when we get to it here in a few minutes. So the first word here or phrase is numerical. Expression. Now hopefully you're able to fit it all on the line. It's difficult for me because I have this thick ink with my uh, smart tablet here, but hopefully you can get that in there. The other thing is you should be hitting the pause button when you're watching this at home by yourself to make sure I don't go too far ahead and you're able to get everything down. Well, a numerical expression is a combination of the word that goes here is numbers and operations. such as addition, subtraction, multiplication. We're supposed to use a dot. You're going to still see the X a little bit in here, but typically, typically we see a dot to represent multiplication, and I'm going to be using that quite a bit. Division, that's the traditional division sign, but also a fraction in uh, a fraction bar, such as 4 over 2, that also means divide. So basically, if you have a combination of some number and uh, a a math arithmetic sign, that's a numerical expression. Okay? Number two is the word evaluate. All of these words you're going to hear us using uh, throughout chapter one, and it's important that you get the uh, understanding of what they all mean, especially this one, as you're going to see it in the instructions in your homework today. If you're taking a quiz and it says evaluate, I expect you to know what that means. If you ask me, I won't tell you because that's part of what I'm testing you on. To evaluate something means to find the numerical value of an expression. Okay, here's an example. If I said 3 plus 2, okay, that's not evaluated yet. 3 plus 2 is not evaluated. 3 plus 2 is a numerical expression. If I evaluate that, I say, well, that's 5. That's evaluated right there. I'll abbreviate that because I'm running out of room. But it, So evaluate is to, is to turn it all the way down into a number. You can think of it that way. But the way we really say it in math is to find the numeric value of the expression, which, it, which would be, in that case, the 5. All right, huge, huge lesson right here. Number 3. You should have three little blanks there. And they, in the blanks, go these three words. The order of, and I wish I'd made a longer line here, operations. This is a huge, huge piece for you. And you're going to have to do some work if you don't already know how to use this. Hopefully you've seen it before. But the order of operations is the order with which we always evaluate math problems. Now evaluate, we saw up there. So if you have more than one math operation, like let's say you have an addition sign and a multiplication sign in the same problem, we all have to do them in the same order. If we don't, we'll get different answers, and that could be a huge, huge problem. So this is a big, big deal for us right here. Okay, So this is the order of operations I'm going to run through next. You need 
to know these if you don't already. All right, so number one here, this means you do this first. Okay, you, you do this first in the order of which you solve a math problem. And the first thing you always do is parentheses. Now parentheses really means group symbol. And when we do parentheses, first simplify what is right here, inside the grouping symbols. Whatever is inside. Okay, why do I say inside? Well, here's why. If I say this, if I say 3 plus 2 with parentheses, and then maybe I go times 5, okay, that's inside the parentheses. So you have to do that first. Okay, so if there's something inside the parentheses, you always do that first. Here, if I had, the reason we say w do what's inside first, if you have parentheses like that, let's, let's say you have 3 parentheses 2, we will notice inside the parentheses, there, there's nothing except a number. It's already evaluated. So what this really means, and this is important too, that actually means just multiply 3 times 2. Whenever you have two parentheses touching, like right here, that just means multiply those things together. And that's important for you to know as well. Okay, so whatever's inside the parentheses, that's like the trump card. Okay, that's the that's always first inside the parentheses. After you've done inside the parentheses, the next thing you always do are the exponents. Second, simplify any again exponent value. Well, an exponent, I'll do an example over here. An exponent might look like 4 to the power of 2. That's an exponent. That means multiply 4 times itself that many times. In this case, 2 times. So that would be 16. It's not 8. It's often incorrectly said to be 8. No, it means 4 times 4, not 4 times 2. Ex exponents are always second. Exponents are always second after parentheses. If all of the exponents are evaluated and the parentheses have disappeared, the next thing we do, number three, okay, this has often been taught incorrectly, um, hopefully not anymore. I think it's gotten a lot better, but I remember a long time ago having to reteach middle school students because this has been taught wrong. The third thing you're supposed to do is multiply and or divide third. Okay, so third, evaluate multiplication and division. Here we go. Ready? From left to right. In the past, people have been taught, and this is, was a long time ago, and I haven't seen it lately, but people have been taught to always multiply before you divide, and that's not true. Uh, here's an example. If I were to ask you to do 12 divided by 2 times 6, we would divide the 12 divided by 2 first. We would say 12 divided by 2 is 6, and so you would have 6 times 6. Because multiplication and division, they're called inverse operations. It's kind of like they're equal value in the order of operations. So we, if that's the only thing we have left, we go left to right with multiplication and division. Please uh, understand that. If you're not sure, please see me with questions. And that takes us to the fourth part, and that is to add and subtract. And the same thing holds true that we evaluate addition and subtraction left to right. And that's a huge, huge thing and often misunderstood. I'm going to be testing you on that. I'm going to be checking to make sure you understand that. And I will give you specific problems that will show you that. See, here's what's happened in the past. People have used this, and I remember teaching this. I would teach it right, but people would write PEMDAS like this. A lot of people have heard that word. Well, I'm not a big fan of that because that makes it look like we should always multiply before we divide. So I don't do that anymore. I write it like this. Watch this. P, E, then I go M, D on the same line, A, S, there. So you still kind of see PEMDAS, but you have to realize that multiplication and division take equality in its order. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here, again, because uh, rules of YouTube, around 10 minutes is the largest they'll let me upload.
So I'm going to get this uploaded and then I'm going to go on to the next worksheet which are the examples. So you'll need to do both of these as part of your homework first.